Hi, and welcome to the Hyperduino and MakerBit workshop. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look at how you can build interactive exhibits with your Hyperduino and MakerBit. So let's get started. The Hyperduino and MakerBit system is designed to work with either the Arduino as a shield or the MicroBit as a plug-in connector. The Hyperduino and MakerBit boards come in several different flavors depending upon your needs. You can either get one with a simple plug-and-play connector for LEDs and touch sensors, or you can get the more advanced version which has connectors for motors and servos. Same thing for the MakerBit, you can get one with the simple plug-and-play or the one with all of the additional connectors. But don't worry if you have one of these simpler Hyperduino or MakerBit boards, you can still use things like servos or light sensors. For example, on the Hyperduino, you have access to all of the Arduino pins here on the left and right. And on the MakerBit, you have access to the analog pins over here, as well as an I2C connector over here and motor outputs over here. The Hyperduino and Maker Bits are designed to be used in either two modes, as standalone where you're using just a battery to power LEDs and motors, or you can actually plug them into your computer and expand the capabilities by using the Hyperduino and Maker Bits software. Both the Hyperduino and MakerBit kits come with everything you need to start making interactive maker projects for science fairs, history day projects, or other interactive exhibits. You get the Hyperduino or MakerBit board itself, along with an Arduino or MicroBit. In addition, you get a quick start guide that tells you immediately how to get started. You get LEDs, touch sensors, you get RGB LEDs, and light sensors, as well as additional components. And finally, you'll get a real interactive maker project that you can put together and start using right away. So let's go ahead and do that now. Begin assembling your kit by taking the piece of foam tape and sticking it onto the back of your Funduino. This will help prevent scratches to any surface you might be working on. Once you have that glued down, then you can go ahead and take the Hyperduino and stick it onto the top of the Arduino like that. Make sure all the pins are lined up properly on both sides and then just simply press down evenly. Now you can go ahead and you can start assembling the LEDs and the touch pins. For the LEDs, your kit might have come with some that are already pre-assembled or you might have ones that you need to assemble yourself. Use the connectors with the black end as this will match the black connector on the Hyperduino. And go ahead and take your LEDs, and it doesn't matter which colors you use, that's up to you. And what you want to do is put the short leg of the LED into the side of the socket with the black triangle. Here I've highlighted the triangle with a Sharpie to make it easier to see. And go ahead and just push in the LED as far as it'll go. It'll probably go about halfway and continue for all of the other LEDs, making sure to put the short end into the triangle marked. If you get it wrong, don't worry, the LED won't light up. You can just turn it around and it should be fine. When you're all done, you should have 12 LEDs inside two of the wire harnesses. Now you can go ahead and do the same thing for the touch pins. So out of the box, the Hyperduino and their MakerBit have support for 12 touch pins and 12 LEDs. For the touch pins, you want to do the same thing, except this time use the connector with the gray or white socket on the end of it. And go ahead and insert the touch pins into each socket on the connector. Again, these will go in only about halfway. You don't need to force it as long as it feels secure. When you're all done assembling, you should have the 12 touch pins in the gray cable as well as the 12 LEDs in the two black cables. Now, it doesn't matter about the color of the wires or the color of the LEDs at all. It All that matters is the position of the pins within the sockets. So let's go ahead now and we'll plug in the sockets into the Hyperduino board. And to do that, you can just use the little notch and line it up and then we'll plug in the touch sensors now and in case you're curious this other middle blue one that we're not using right now is for analog sensors so if you were doing things like a temperature sensor or a light sensor so now that we've got everything plugged in we have touch pins 2 through 13 up here corresponding to leds 2 through 7 and 8 through 13 right here and that numbering scheme starts at 2 just so it matches the arduino 
Let's go ahead now and we'll plug in the 9 volt battery. So once I've plugged the battery in, I should be able to touch the individual touch sensors. So for example, here's number two, and that lights up LED two, three, four, five, etc. So we've got it now where we've got 12 touch sensors hooked up to 12 LEDs. And we can imagine using this in a project where you would be explaining something on say a poster board and touch an LED to light something up. So let's go ahead and we'll assemble the sample volcano project and see how we might use this. For the volcano project, we're only gonna need two touch sensors and one LED. So with the touch sensor plugged into pin two, if we touch it, then LED two lights up. To assemble the board, all we need to do is simply put the LED through the back here where it's labeled L2 and press it in. And then we have two touch sensors, T2 and T3, that are gonna go in. And to assemble those, we simply just take the touch sensors and poke them right through the board, like that. And here is the other one. And then in the back of the board, we just hook the touch sensors back up again. So for example, this is T2. And here is T3. We've assembled our board and plugged the battery back in. And so now when I touch the pin for main vent, it lights up just like that. And so you can imagine explaining your project and when you want to highlight something, you just touch that and it lights up. Now you could actually have these touch pins anywhere here. For example, they could be down here or somewhere else or something else could light up. But now what about this other touch pin here? This says touch here to restart video. Well, we don't have any video right now, but if we go ahead and download the Hyperduino app on our Chromebook or laptop, we can go ahead and actually tie a video to this project. And you can find a link to download that within your Hyperduino kit. So let's go ahead and we'll fire up the app itself. And when you do that, it should automatically connect to your Hyperduino. If it doesn't automatically connect, plug it in and then go under settings and choose the appropriate serial port for your Hyperduino. So the app itself consists of two main sections. On the left hand side is the playlist and this is where you'll add items that you want to be controlled by the Hyperduino. And on the right hand side is simply a web browser and this is the content that you want to display when various touch sensors are pressed. So let's go ahead and we'll add the sample video. And to make this easier, we have a button here on the toolbar that just goes straight to the volcano video. So you can see we've got that up now and the student is talking about the volcano. And then over here on the left hand side, we can go ahead and hit the plus button and that'll add our YouTube video. If I go ahead and hit the green play button, it should actually go to that video and start playing. And you can see that while the video is playing, this item over here on the left-hand side is actually lit up in green. Let's go ahead and we'll wire up the touch sensors now. So we want it to play the entire video when the person touches pin number three, where it says touch here to restart video. So we click on the input to respond to, and we tell it to respond to pin number T3. And so when someone touches that, it should start playing the video. Let's go ahead and we can try it now. So you can see that as soon as I wired it up, it went ahead and actually became live, and we can just test right away. But now we also want this pin to maybe do something. So this says main vent. So let's see where she starts talking about the main vent. There are a lot of different kinds of parts in a volcano. The magma chamber, the main vent, the secondary vent. Okay, so the main vent was around 10 seconds. So let's go ahead and we'll add the exact same video but we'll have it start at 10 seconds and we'll have it end at say 12 seconds. And now we can go ahead and expand this and we'll tell it to respond to pin T2. And let's also have it light up at the same time. So at the beginning of the media, in other words, at the 10 second mark, we wanna have it turn on LED number two to high and then at the end, when it's done, we wanna have it turn it off. So let's go ahead now and we'll try it out. If I click main vent, it should go to 10 seconds, light up, and then stop. So now let's play the entire video. Hi, this is my volcano project. There are a lot of different kinds of parts in a volcano. 
the magma chamber, the main vent. So you can see that when she was talking about the main vent, it actually lit up the LED on the model itself. So you can imagine when she's talking about the various different parts of the volcano, for example, the main vent, the crater, the secondary vent, you could have LEDs all over this display and they could each light up at the appropriate time indicating the different sections. For the maker bit, we simply need to plug the micro bit into the maker bit shield. And when you plug it in, make sure to plug it in so that the LEDs are facing up on the board. It won't cause any harm if you plug it in the other way, but nothing will actually work correctly. And then once you've got that plugged in, you can plug in the cables for the LEDs and then the cable for the touch sensors. And then finally plug the USB cable from your micro bit into your laptop. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and we can fire up the MakerBit Media Linker and that should automatically connect to the board. And then once that's done, we can go ahead and we can create our playlist. So finally, let's go ahead and we'll save our video. We'll call it Volcano Parts Maker Bit. And do File Save. And now we've saved that media list so we can share it with our classmates or friends. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the Hypertuino and the MakerBit kits. You can use the kits to create interactive maker projects that provide real learning in the classroom. You can use the kits either with a computer or without a computer. In addition, you can extend the kits with things like servos, MP3 players, or LCDs. I'll include links in the show notes for all of these resources. Thanks for watching.